Aloha worm ohana. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. We did it. Six months, six months we've been building our worm colonies, feeding our wormies, watering them daily, worrying about them day and night, wondering what this bug was and that bug was, and we're done. We finished a six month cycle of vermicomposting with a starter colony of a quarter pound. And today we find out how we did. So we already know one real important thing, which is our waste diversion. We're well over a ton and a half. Last time I looked, it was 3,300 and something pounds. That's remarkable when you think of it. If you have not put in all your data, you still can. Obviously you stopped feeding your worms a while back, but if you didn't put in all your numbers, please do so. So we have the total of waste diverted. That's our first data point, but many more data points to come. And that's all gonna happen on your harvest. I'm gonna do a demonstration harvest for you today of the bin that I did along with you. So you can see the procedure and you are going to, if you're available, join us on a Zoom meeting. You'll get an email from Augusto. You all know Augusto uh, with the link to our Zoom meeting, which will be Saturday at 10 o'clock. And I will guide you through. I will be uh, working with one of the teachers in, um, who's going to be harvesting her bin at the same time. And if you have questions, if you want to sh you know, point the camera and show me what's going on and we'll just do it together. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So anyway, today is my turn and I'm really nervous. <laughs> oh, I haven't fed my worms for a couple weeks and they haven't, I haven't seen them. And I just hope they're just on the bottom sulking and not too mad at me because now we get to find out how many worms I could grow in six months, starting with a quarter pound of worms, six inches of cardboard. And I think I put in around 180 pounds of food over the six months and 26, 24 midweeks and four um, regular newspapers, Honolulu star advertisers, I don't know. Anyway, I diverted a lot of waste myself, that's for sure. My worries were very happy and ate heartily and uh, produced a lot of vermicast. So we're going to be measuring both the worms. When you do a harvest of a worm bin, you're harvesting two products. You're harvesting vermicast and you're harvesting worms. So it's kind of a, a double harvest. And once you have a worm colony going, you may not have um, a, a expansion of your worm colony like you will the first time. So that's why this is really the most exciting harvest you're gonna do. So um, I'm real excited. And I just want you to know before you get started and dump out your worm bin, you gotta be prepared with everything you need because once those worms are out of the bin and exposed, you know they're real uncomfortable in air and light and you have to be ready to rebed them quickly. So here's what you wanna do. Assemble all of these things ahead of time. First off, you need to make some fresh bedding, whether you use cardboard or uh, bunny bedding, you know, pine shavings, that works really well, or something. Get a, a bunch of it together. I got some cardboard together and I moistened it up really good. This is gonna go into my bin right after we empty it out. That's my fresh bedding. And that's where my colony of worms will go. I'm splitting my colony. I'm gonna put a, a pound back in my old bin and whatever is left over, I'm gonna take and put in one of the school bins. So I also have a little box of bedding for those worms, not for them to live in, but just so that they can be safely and comfortably transported. We're also going to be measuring our vermic vermicast not the usual way by dried weight because that's a couple of weeks of processing still we're just going to put it in a five gallon bucket and eyeball it and say how many gallons of out of the bin vermicast we produce and we'll use that as our me measurement so find yourself a five gallon bucket we're all going to use that as a measurement and as you see i am very optimistic i think i'm going to get about 10 pounds of vermicast out of this bin we'll see the other thing you need is some kind of scale most of you have that your kitchen scale still that will work just fine for weighing your worms and i have this neat analog scale so we can weigh my, my worms on this one it'll be easier for you to see so get your measurement items together get your rebedding items together including plenty of moist bedding and the other thing you're going to need is some kind of container to season your vermicast so you know it's got to have pukas in it i always put pukas on the side but something that's aerated doesn't necessarily need drainage holes but it could but um you know you know these storage totes they're really handy so if you have one around the house this will work fine because it's only going to be for a month 
Um, if you want to go get one, definitely put some pukas on the side and maybe on the bottom. This is where you're going to store your vermicast out of the bin for about a month to finish. Because out of the bin, it's usually not quite ready. There's lots of eggs and babies in there and it's not quite finished. But if you just let it sit for about a month, all those babies will eat up whatever's left. They'll be big enough so they're easy to extract and you'll have finished vermicast and another handful of worms in a month. So you need a container for that. Okay, everybody got that? Five gallon buckets, fresh bedding, container for the vermicast, and your scale. All right, are you ready to harvest? Yikes, I am. So here we go. Uh, and I've invited uh, Auntie Mary to help me today because this is a two person job. It's, it is a lot of work for one person. So if you have some friends, hey, Auntie Mary, thanks for coming. Hey, Mindy. You know, she is really, really good at doing worms on a huge scale like we do. She's my, one of my staff members, obviously, but she's never harvested a box bin before. Mm -hmm. ah, so this is her first experience as well. Now I've done this a zillion times, but not for many years. So it'll be real fun for me. So here's what we're going to do. I'm taking off the bin blanket. Thank you, bin blanket. I love this item because you can water right through it. And if you take a look, you can see the wormies have eaten through all the paper. I haven't fed them for maybe two and a half weeks and they've eaten through that fluffy, fluffy layer that I thought was so, so thick on top, it's gone. And now I'm seeing sort of some half done vermicast but I'm really wanting to see where the wormies are and, and, and uh, how many worms I have. So um, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna dump it out, we're gonna split it up and we're gonna show you the procedure for the harvest. So let's just take it to the edge of the table and dump. Let's try not to lose it from the front. You ready? One, two, three. Over we go. Oh, my darlings, I hope you're okay. Whoa, <laughs> don't want to lose any. Kind of move it around. You got it, Mary? If you're up here, if you do that, I'm just going to push a little bit. Okay, got it? Yeah. So find the biggest table yeah. you can find, you guys. Yeah, I see that. Because this is a okay. lot of material. Got it? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're losing a bit, but we'll catch we're, it. We'll kick them up. We'll get them. We'll get them. So on the bottom, I have some bedding still unfinished, but that's okay because I'm going to put it right back into my new bedding batch. So before, whoops, before we get too messed up, let's take off some of this new old bedding. There's a little layer on the, that didn't get done. If I pick up a few worms, I don't care, but this will go, this is basically a chunk, but it's enough that we're just going to grab it and throw it into my bedding box right now. So anything that is not processed is called a chunk. It can be a chunk right here. It can be a chunk of bedding, cardboard, paper. It can be a chunk of food. So I'm really, I like a lot of bedding on the bottom. So I put a lot in. So there's still a lot here. I'm going to dig, dig it out. Maybe I won't put so much bedding next time. What do you think? Think I overdid it? A little bit. I know, live and learn, right? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't hurt, and it's going to go right back in anyway. Yeah, and you know what? I work on these big these big things all the time where we use a lot of bedding. So if I was going to air, it was going to be on the side of too much bedding. You know what, Mary? Why are we doing that? Let's just throw it right back in the box. I'm just finally thinking. Okay, so we'll just put it right back. We'll take our bedding. Okay, you wormies, move back, move out. So I'm guessing that you're not gonna have nearly this much bedding. I always, oh. I think in terms of, of uh, lots of bedding, because I do these huge systems and we use lots, but that was probably overdone for a little bin. It's probably been 15 years since I've done a box bin. I kind of forgot a lot of the details. I'm not making excuses, folks. I'm just uh, explaining. Oh, well, I see some worms. I think we're doing okay. Okay, now I'm going to move this material out a little bit. Okay, there we go. They're going to work their way down and we're going to split this up as soon as we get this little blast of bedding out of here. Okay, so I've got some bedding still, still good for another run. 
a few worms hanging around in the bedding. We won't worry about them. I think we have enough worms to account for, for whatever. Okay, got most of it? That's it. Okay, a little layer of unfinished bedding on the bottom. To be expected. So if you have a little of that, just throw it right back into your new bin. So my plan is to rebed my new, this, this old bin with some fresh bedding. And I'm gonna put one pound of worms back. And this is gonna to go to my apartment building where we have decided, my and myself and some neighbors, that we're gonna vermicompost um, our, our waste at home. And um, we don't make very much, <laughs> but, but there's a bunch of us. So I think we can probably keep a pound of worms very happy. So this is gonna be the Wyola Worm Collective. And uh, I gave them all a little box to put food waste in. And on Saturday, when I'm home in the afternoon, we will all go feed the worms and I'll be the manager of the worm bin. So that is my, uh, my contribution to community spread. Ooh, hey, this is looking pretty nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Ooh, man, oh man, oh man. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside and maybe throw a little bit more bedding in it so we'll be ready to go. This time I won't put in so much. I won't overdo it. And by the way, you know, the worms don't care. If you kind of don't have the balance quite right, so what? You do get better and better with this every time you do it. But as I said, it's been a while. I've been working on big systems and they're managed just a little bit differently. Wow, I think we have a few worms and a million babies in here. It's still very, very reproductive. Working their way down. Okay, so Mary, let's put this to the side and we'll split this up. Because now it's gonna be boring to watch, so we're gonna try and speed up the process a little. Now I suggest we split this into two. So I'll give you half. Or less, you're so fast at this. I am pretty fast, I'll take a little more. <laughs> and we're gonna put a bucket in the middle to put our vermicast in. So we'll just start filling up our bucket with the finished vermicast right away. Okay, guys. Yeah. Okay, so they're like panicky, but they're all right. They're just going, what just happened here? All right, so here's, you're going to make a, a, a couple of three different uh, categories of things. The worms are one category, and they are going to do this on their own by moving down. Now, as you well know, worms are photophobic. They do not like the light. They're always gonna move away from the light, except for these two guys, two little perionics on the move, wondering what's going on. Hey, you guys, get back in there. So they're gonna move away from the light and we're just gonna let them uh, go down on their journey without bothering them at all. They're gonna work their way down. I'm gonna split this into maybe two. Okay, just to make it a little less of a big like thing, or maybe even three. Yeah, okay, I'll do the same. Okay. A little bucket in the middle, and I'm gonna make three, three mounds. So the deal is, it's a nice, loose, you fluffed up your material. So it's a nice, nice loose mound of material, which is gonna allow them to move, move down. So you want a round mound shape, because as you know, they're photophobic, and as the light is shining down on them, they are going to move away from it, and our goal is to get them all to form a little ball at the bottom of this mound of material. So we keep it nice and loose. We keep it rounded without squishing it. So just kind of tuck it up a little bit. And then we're gonna start the pick, the mound and pick method of harvesting. So what you do, we have room in the middle for a squish a bucket in? We'll make it. We'll make it. We'll make it. Okay. We are going to put what feels like finished vermicast into this vermicast bucket. And anything that looks like a chunk, whether it's a chunk of bedding or a chunk of food, we're gonna put over on the side. And something you might notice when you look at your chunks is if you open them, open them up, there's lots of baby wormies inside. And they're just everywhere. Look at, I've got little baby wormies throughout my, my system, no matter what. So it's still loaded with life. 
So I've got some chunks of food and I've got some chunks of bedding mostly. They've pretty much devoured the food. Well, there's a little bit here and there and I'm gonna make a chunks pile. Okay, Mary, a chunks pile. Chunks pile. Yep, so here's my chunks pile. It's gonna be mostly little chunks of bedding or newspaper. And it's got little worms in it, I don't care. And when you get some nice, as the worms go down and you kind of scrape off the surface, that's where you get your real clean and finished vermicast. And it doesn't have to be perfect. There's still gonna be little chunks in it. We drop those in there. So we're gonna collect the vermicast from each of these piles, pulling out the chunks, which will go into our fresh bedding to inoculate it for our next round. And by the way, if you, if you chose to go to a different system, you don't have to do it this very minute. You can rebed your worms and, and transfer them later on. But if you do have a worm hangout or a stacking tray system, you can go ahead and rebed them into, into that. Most of us are just going to be rebedding into our, our box bin again for another round. Okay, now at this point, this is going to get really boring. So um, maybe we can go a little faster. What do you think? Okay, well, that sorting, that pulling away of the vermicast and the chunks, letting the worms go down, took us about an hour. Okay, so you, two people is gonna take that long on most of your system, so give yourself some time. And you can stop in between because the wormies are just gonna hunker down. So here's what we're left with at this point. I've got a little bit more, maybe as much as when we finish up, six gallons of almost finished vermicast, which I'm gonna season and that will go into a box. And um, we have a whole bunch of chunks, which are the unfinished, mostly bedding, cardboard and paper and little bits of food and banana stems and all that. And it's good to have a lot of chunks left over because this is the inoculant. This is what we're gonna mix with your fresh bedding, which will mean that you don't have to go through that startup phase with the decomposer ecosystem because here they are. So all of those microorganisms and other little critters that work the system and make it a worm bin um, are now already established. And so it will go right away. It'll establish your decomposer ecosystem right away in your new bin in your fresh bedding. So it's really good. We have that many chunks and that's good. We're gonna mix them with the fresh bedding. Um, in fact, you wanna do that now just to make some room, Mary? Let's just bring the box over. So we put some fresh bedding in here and we're gonna just mix in the rest of the, our, our chunks, which are loaded, loaded, loaded with eggs and babies and the FBI. Well, I saw some earwigs in there and other little critters. So this is gonna really give us a wonderful kickstart and make a nice established decomposer ecosystem from the get-go. So you're not starting from scratch like you were before with all the scary things that went on as you became accustomed to this different world. Oh, there's a million babies. I don't want to miss anyone. Get in there, you guys. You're going to have a wonderful new life in this wonderful new location. Oh, there's eggs. Oh, God. It's just, they're all over the place. You're going to have a great time. You'll love the people at, what, at, the, at our apartment building. They have lots of good food. And we're going to take really good care of you and see if this works as an apartment dweller's uh, thing. So here's what we're left, out, left with. We have two. I'm going to take this down. Here we go. It's heavy. Ready? Heave ho. Oh. Okay. We have a little bit more vermicast, which we will set aside. But Mary and I are going to put our balls together now. This is what we're left with after combining them. And as you saw in the speed, the speed up, as we got them together. Wait a minute. I'm just going to pick this up and move it. There we go. I'm going to combine it just so the worms can get together in one big giant ball. And then we're gonna give them some time to move down and we're gonna pick away the last of the cast and I will have a giant worm ball 
that remember that little tiny handful you started with <laughs> remember that little tiny four ounce colony oh baby oh baby we got worms now they're peeking through they're peeking Ooh. through so we're giving the two big balls time to get together and again we use our knowledge of their photophobicity their dislike of light to get them to do this great trick of going down as we pick away their cover so the whole harvest thing is just that understanding that you don't pick out the worms one by one you pick the cover out away from them in a loose round mound and that they will go down and make a giant ball now as they get together i'm going to be able to brush this off and we'll get our worm bin together or worm thing together. oh mary let's get the scale up here because we're going to have to now here's where you want to move fast because remember the worms are uncomfortable in light Put it on the end. Put it right there for now. Okay. They're uncomfortable in light and they're uncomfortable with air, so we're going to do. Oh, black soldier fly. Hello. Ding. Yep. All the FBI. They're here. And by the way, the FBI that we talked about are sort of the big, charismatic megafauna. But some other FBI that you guys are going to see in your bin a lot are these little tiny moving dots. Those are the compost mites. And also, just about every bin I have is loaded with these little ice cream shaped conical gold snails. So oh. you may get a bunch of those too, and they're all fine. Remember, all members of the FBI are pretty much welcome in our bin, except maybe those pesky black soldier fly larvae, who are such aggressive eaters they compete with our worms. And a lot of you have big problems with black soldier fly. I can't explain why they just happen <laughs> randomly in people's bins. They find, us. they find us. But once you get your bin established, you should have less and less problems with those kind of critters because it really does become a deco decomposer ecosystem that is dominated by the worm colony. Black soldier fly, hello. Yes, I had them too, we all do. Come on, guys. Okay, we're getting there. We're oh, there. we're getting there, getting a big ball. Come on, you guys. We're big ball, hurry. big ball. <laughs> yeah. Looks like a couple of pounds at least. Maybe I got two pounds here. Maybe I got two and a half pounds here. And then again, there were the bunch that sort of went flying out in other places, but <laughs> this will give us a rough, a rough um, measurement of our reproductive success. So it's so great. I love projects with measurable results. So we have three measurable results. Amount of food waste diverted, number of worms, a weight of worms uh, increased, and the amount of vermicast. So it's just great. We can measure all this. And um, I promise you, you get better and better every time you do it because you some little nuances that escape you the first couple times around will soon uh, you, you'll soon be aware of them and make adjustments to make it perfect. And, and this worm colony will fit your household. My goal for you was to get enough of a worm colony to manage your household food waste comfortably. So for some people, it's not that many. For some people, you need more and you know you need more capacity and you're going to go to a bigger system or a second system to grow your worms. But everybody's household is different. And it's not only the, the weight of food, but it's the content of the food. So everyone is a little bit different and the worms will adjust and make themselves at home with whatever you have to offer. These guys are the best. They never complain. <laughs> oh, remember that little tiny ball of wormies? Hello. And these guys are hungry too. I can just tell they haven't been eaten. So they've lost a little weight over the last couple of weeks. But I'm going to feed them really good when I get them rebed. They're going to have a really good meal of their favorite stuff. Banana peels, papaya skins, baked goods. Oh, my God. Oh. Those of you got kids that go to KIS, you know Miss Laura's banana bread. Oh, it is legendary. They love it when they get some of her banana bread in their bucket. Anyhow, oh, this is looking pretty good. Now, Mary, I couldn't possibly hold all these worms myself, so it's going to need a double, a double lift. Okay, okay, we're pretty clean here. We don't want to be weighing vermicast. We just want to be weighing red meat. We are getting there. 
Yeah, you gotta helping us out, trimming everything at the little shelf so that you can pick up and move. Yeah. Oh, my squirmers, little squirms. That's at least two pounds, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Just guessing. You've got a well tuned down. Yeah. You know. And they look real robust too, you know? They're just kind of healthy and chunky. They're going, yeah, feed me. We'll be healthier and chunkier. Come on, what's going on? Haven't seen a meal in two weeks. See how they're getting frothy? They're getting pretty uncomfortable. They're starting to excrete some salomic fluid. So Mary, oh. let's roll them up. You okay, ready? ready? Okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna roll them up. You ready? Got it, Augusto? Okay. Ready? Wait a minute, you got to get this picture of you and me smiling and our worms. Got it? Yeah, you guys, I want you to all give me a photo like this for our website <laughs> slideshow. Everybody, big smiles and your giant worm colony. Okay, let's see how much they weigh. Worms. How much? Where am I? Two pounds? Tell me, where are we? Take a look, Mary. Two and a half. We are about two and a half. All right, yay. Okay. From one quarter. From so one quarter. Ten times, it was, is it ten times our original? Yeah. Not okay. bad. Okay. Oh, you guys. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> we've got a little more um, cast to put in our bucket, but we didn't get ten pounds. I was a little... A little yeah. optimistic there. It's just that that bin was so heavy. I figured, yeah. oh God, there had to be a zillion pounds. I know. You're looking in. Wow. Okay. okay. Let's see. Are you ready? Oh yeah. So I'm going to take one pound for my um, my Wyola Street guys. So I'm going to take about two and some out and just leave one pound in here. My two and some is going to go to one of our school bins. I'm just going to give it back so they can get back to work making money for the school. And I'll be left with one pound, which will go to start my new colony at 2021 Wyola Street in Honolulu. We're going to be the first apartment on our block, maybe not the last, to have a worm colony. It's a pretty good tight-knit community over there. And I know you know my street because if you go to Wyola Shave Ice, you pass my apartment. <laughs> I'm right. Oh, is that a pound? Okay. Let me put these guys. They're going to go in the box that I've just put some moist um, cardboard in there so I can transport them comfortably. And I'm going to wet them down a little because they're pretty traumatized from this experience. And they're certainly dry. So, yeah. Oh, thanks, Mary. Well, where did this hose come from? Boy, it's not doing so well. <laughs> Still work? Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm going to water them down, let them get settled. And before I leave Kailua today, I'm going to take them, put them, put them in one of our bins. So they'll just join their old buddies in one of our worm colonies. And then, whoops, wrong, wrong box. Here we go. We wet these guys down a little, not too much, because I have to take this home in my car and take my one pound, a little bit, a little bit. I'm starting exactly one pound, right? One pound of wormies to start the Wyola Street Worm Collective. There they are. So they're going into my old bin, which is freshly bedded and has chunks in it to kickstart it. And in they go. Look, there's some FBI. There's a little beetle right there. There's lots of little critters in here. And they look like they're happy wormies. We ran into so many eggs and babies doing this, I know that this colony is going to be big and happy. It can take care of whatever the Wyola Street Collective collects up during the week. So I'm going to be the worm bin manager over there. We're going to see if this works. It'll be fun. Another experiment in vermicomposting. So that's it, Worm Ohana. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that harvest demonstration. And please, 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 if you can, join us for our Zoom meeting on Saturday at 10 o'clock. Um, Augusta will send you a link so that you can get in on it. And if you can't, don't worry, it will be posted as well as you can watch this video again and um, go through the procedure. Again, just make sure you have everything on hand before you start. 
give it some time because this does take some time. And there's still another process with uh, seasoning, curing up that the, your batch of vermicast. So um, we'll send you some information about that later on, but it's not a big deal. I think you can make it work for you. So um, again, thanks for uh, paying attention. And that was really fun. I feel very gratified. I got my two pounds of worms, that was my goal, and a little bit more, and some beautiful vermicast. And uh, we're at the end of this project, I have to say. I enjoyed it very much. I learned a lot from you, and I hope you feel the same. So I'll see you on Saturday. And uh, those of you, again, who want to return your bin, I'd love for you to harvest first and see your worms. But if you don't, you can bring it back too. Again, no questions asked. We just were thrilled that you got a chance to have this experience with us. So I say aloha, see you Saturday, and we'll harvest everybody's bins, or at least lots of them. Aloha, thank you, mahalo, wormohana, you're the best. <laughs>